I believe the title of this film is Oh My God. And I think it's very apt because we say that in times of crisis. We say that in times of humor even. Very funny thing that you've heard, you can say, oh my God. Um, something wonderful, is the reaction is, oh my God. Something terrible, the reaction is, oh my God. I know when 9-11 happened, interviews with people, um, they all said, oh my God. So it's a phrase that goes very deep, I think, and a good title for this film. I'm Princess Michael of Kent, um, and we're here in the pavilion in my garden at Kensington Palace. Um, I'm the wife of the Queen's first cousin, Prince Michael of Kent. Good, good. I'm going to go straight into uh, to the first question, ma'am, and that is, uh, what is God? What is God? Um, I think probably once my, my earliest um, connection with God was that he was going to punish me if I was bad so he was an all-important authority in my life but very soon I, I went to a convent a convent school and I learned that God was good God was goodness and all goodness came from God and we had to be good to please God and I was caught very early. They say when the Jesuits get you before you're six that they have you for life and they got me for life. So uh, for me God is a source of goodness and someone I have to be good for. Um, Do you see God in, in an image? No. God doesn't have a face for me. I used to, as a child, look at the sky, look at the clouds, and try to see if God was taking a shape, because sometimes clouds looked like people, and sometimes I saw a cloud that made me think of the Virgin Mary as she appears in picture books or in portrait, in paintings. But no, God was, God was bigger than Jesus Christ, you see. God was much bigger, so he doesn't have a face. I never believed the, the artist's vision of an old man with a white beard, being married to an old man with a white beard. Um, no, he doesn't have an image. I always think of it, think of God as a great umbrella of powerful goodness that we on earth sometimes misinterpret how to translate this goodness. And so we, in different parts of the world, do things in the name of God, in quotes. But we all have different ideas of what God is. I see God, as Christians do, as a forgiving God. That's the point of Christianity for me, is that it's forgiving, a forgiving God. So. God is forgiveness, God is goodness, and I'm not quite sure why we fight for this forgiveness and goodness. We're fighting seems to be evil, but I don't understand that very well. Are you talking about different religions fighting within each other, or against each other? Really different lit religions, well, fighting in the name of God. As a historian, I. I'm always conscious that there seems to be financial reasons for most, for most wars, um, but they're very often fought throughout history in God's name, in a particular God's name, in of a, a God of different religions' name. They are fighting for their God. Um, I think the soldiers very often do because they're simple people and they believe more than the people directing them to fight, uh, which historically I've found is usually for some sort of gain and not a spiritual gain at that. But why do you think so many religions fight? Why do people fight? Why, why do you see children fight in the schoolyard? I think that 
confrontation is in the nature of man, less in the nature of woman, but it's in the nature of man. And belief is the greatest source of confrontation. I think the nuns of my youth uh, made me feel very cozy about religion. All these lovely saints one had, although it disappointed me very much when my favorite saint was struck off not very long ago as not having existed, Saint Philomena. Um, she was the patron saint of virgins, I remember, as, as a schoolgirl. And, and she was horribly and hideously tortured to death. And she inspired many a, um, a Catholic schoolgirl. And then, not very long ago, some saints were, were struck off as not really having existed. Saint Philomena is one of my great regrets. Um, but no, the fear only entered, I think, when we learned in gruesome detail about the tortures that um, saints suffered for their religion. That was quite horrifying, and one has visual memory of all those illustrations in, in the, the prayer books of my childhood. I don't think we should be afraid of God, and I don't think that, that the, I, don't, I wasn't taught a fear of God, I was taught a love of God, and that God is all forgiving, so why be afraid of the ultimate authority on your life when, when you die? Um, is a forgiving God. So no, I, I don't think one should have fear of God. I was brought up with the Latin, the Latin liturgy, and I'm very familiar with that. And the great joy for me as somebody who travels a great deal was to be able to go into a church, Catholic church, in any country in the world and understand what was going on. Um, when the Mass, uh, it became the rule to to say it in the vernacular. Um, this was very confusing if you were in Morocco or, or if you were in, in Arab countries, which I, um, the, the African countries, which I traveled a great deal. Um, I didn't know what was going on. And so that put me off um, sometimes, going to mass in, in obscure countries during my travels. But my husband is a very um, fair, made a very fair decision when we married, that we would take it in turns, um, one Sunday Anglican, next Sunday Catholic, and so on, so that the children who by law have to be brought up, and by um, family decision, have to be brought up as Anglicans, um, they have a pretty good idea of both religions, particularly as they went to Anglican schools. Um, although my son we put him in the f in a house at, at his school, Eton, which was um, had the first ever Catholic housemaster. Um, this was considered very strange, but I felt that as an intelligent child, he'd have important questions at some point, and I wanted him to get clear answers from a Catholic. Um, that was important to me, and. And as a result, they know very well about both religions. In a sense, they've been brought up in both religions, although they're both Anglican.